Okay, for this project, you're going to need two pieces of paper, two strips, um, just make sure that they're straight, um, a pencil, some tape, masking tape, um, it could be any type of tape, and then a sheet of drawing paper. One thing we want to do for our this project is to create a viewfinder. To do that, I'm going to take one strip of paper, I'm going to fold it so that its shape uh, has a 45 degree angle in the negative space. So let's say this object or this uh, paper is the positive space. Right here is the negative space. So we're gonna, we don't want it to be at an acute angle, obtuse. We want it to be at a right angle. So line it up as best you can and then crease it. One way to check the angle is to use a, your square piece of paper to see if it lines up there's a gap, you might have to move it just slightly one direction or the other, right? So you do that twice. Now we want to connect these, so I just take the two sides, lined it up. We don't want a really skinny, but we want it to kind of look like the dimensions or ratio of a piece of paper. A piece of paper is a little bit wider than it is tall, it's just a rectangle. Line it up so that it's approximately that size and then just add some tape. We may be using this more frequently, so let's go ahead and tape the back as well. Now we'll end up using this viewfinder so that when we put an object in front of it, we can decide what we want in our frame of the picture and then based off of that we'll kind of know where to draw it on a sheet of paper. I'll show you how that's done. All right I've got my viewfinder. I'm going to take it over to a branch, a plant, something that has positive and negative space. We're choosing an organic object. In this case this plant is a fake plant but I'll use the viewfinder to decide a section that has about half positive space, half negative space, and then I'll use that section, take a photograph, and then use it to um, draw. In this case, I decided to print it out, um, but you don't have to. I wanted to print it out so that you can see what I'm doing on this and then how I transfer that over to my actual drawing. Um, I'll zoom in so you can get a better view. All right, now that we can see a little bit closer, um, first thing I want to do is draw all the contour lines. What that means is the outside of the object, where you have the leaves as our object or our positive space, and then the table would be our negative space. Um, so a good way to remember positive, sa positive space and negative space is positive space is what the object is or the object negative space is everything except for the object everything around it like the table the shadows all of that would be the negative space in this situation so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw the contour line what that means is i'm drawing the outer edge of the positive space making sure that i never am crossing lines right we're basically just drawing shapes and a shape is an enclosed line. Every once in a while I move the pencil so that I can see. Anyway, do that around your entire object just to get a feel for it. Um, you will get to spaces like right here. As I go draw around this leaf, right here some students would want to cross over that stem. Don't cross over it, we're doing an enclosed line. So I'm going to go around to the right side of that leaf and then I'd keep going around. Then I'd draw another line to go inside. Now this line isn't exact. The lines aren't perfect, but those are the lines we're looking at when we're transferring or drawing this on a larger scale. So right now, you can see based off my fingers, this is really small in the viewfinder. Um, what I want to do is make this drawing, the contour lines I'm drawing here, really big on my actual drawing. Now when you're doing this, you can look at sections. So if I look at the entire thing, it's a little bit overwhelming. 
But if I say, okay, I'm going to divide it in half and divide it in half again, then on my large sheet of paper, divide that in half and divide it in half again. Then I can look, okay, in this quarter section, top left corner, we have this part of the leaf and the top part of this bottom leaf. That's it, oh, in this corner. Then we look at the next section. And one thing that, that helps with this is just adding a couple dots and then just connecting the dots. Let me show you how that's done on a larger scale. All right, so what you see here is my drawing surface. This is where I'm going to add uh, the positive and negative space that I see in the picture that I either took or in the still life that I'm looking at in person. Now, I'll use my viewfinder to see where the different objects are. I might mentally, not physically, I might mentally divide the paper in half, vertically and horizontally, and then mentally, not physically, divide my drawing paper in half, vertically and horizontally. So when I divide up that section, it just gives me a smaller piece of information to focus on. Makes it a little bit easier. So I'm going to focus on this top left corner to start off. Right? And then instead of drawing all of those lines immediately, I'm going to put a dot where I think the leaf should begin. Right? And then a dot where I think it should end. And I'm going to look at those angles to kind of get an idea of how wide to go. And then, so for, I just drew three dots here and then I just connect the dots. Um, and then I'm drawing pretty lightly. That way if I need to make any adjustments or erase and go back and do something different, I can. So this I brought in a little bit too far. I'm gonna look at that angle, goes pretty much towards the center. And then notice there's another leaf right here, but instead of drawing that other leaf, um, I don't want to cross the lines. I want to do more of shapes. So I'm gonna say, okay, that leaf kinda comes over right around here and it comes down to about right here. And then it comes in and then goes down again. But then it stops Remember, I'm only drawing the negative space or the contour lines around this object. So, and this might not be perfect, and that's okay, but the idea is that we're looking at the negative space. Um, this is a, the reason we're doing this is to practice coordinating our eyes to look at what we see and draw what we see rather than what we interpret. Because it's really easy for our brain to say, oh, a leaf, I know what a leaf looks like, and then just draw what our brain thinks a leaf looks like. This way, we're focused on shapes, um, ratios, so we know there's a gap in between this top leaf and this second leaf down and then we know it comes all the way to the side and then we can see it connects down here so you can see I, I need to change that just slightly All right, I'm gonna speed it up on the camera, but in real life, I'm gonna take my time and go through adding all of the negative space. We got my beverage too. Let me clarify, that is Dr. Pepper. It is not daddy juice.
Okay, once you're done um, transferring what you see in your picture onto your drawing, uh, we're just going to shade, practicing those techniques we've used in the past. Now, right now, if you look at my pencil, it's kind of dull because I've been using it as I would write in the same, just creating a defined line. Now that I want to create a soft edge, I'm going to use the side of my pencil and I'm going to use a sharp pencil. And as I add this line, I'm not going to hold my pencil like I do writing. I'm going to hold it underneath my hand. Uh, this is another skill with drawing is alternatively, instead of using drawing like you would write, we're going to draw underneath our hand so we get more lead surface on our drawing. And then I will try and create a very defined line around the edge. And then beyond that, using the side of my pencil, I'm going to shade. Now here's the thing, as you start shading, if I go over an area where I've already shaded, it's going to smear. We don't want to smear stuff. so. I'm going to use a piece of scratch paper to put underneath my hand whenever I have to go over an area where I've already drawn. Or I can rotate my paper and then just kind of go in a clockwise motion. So what that would look like is I won't want to draw above there. So I'm going to rotate my paper, draw this line, rotate, draw this line. Or maybe I'll do these ones first and then rotate but making sure not to rest my hand on top of where I've already drawn. Um, even then, I guess it's a better idea to have a piece of scratch paper. Oh, snap. I think I broke that. If I move this paper, if this paper rotates a bunch, it's also going to smear. So I'm just going to make sure not to move that paper too much. Now we've learned a few different styles of shading. Um, you can choose to shade like this. If you want, you can use a pen. If you want to do crosshat shading, in this case, I'm going to use a gel pen just to show you. Um, actually, so there's a couple styles of shading we've gone over. We've gone over how to shade like this, going from a dark area to a light area, and then to define that edge. All right, there's that style of shading. Another style of shading if you want to do, if you're going along an edge like this, is to do crosshatch where you do lots of lines close to the edge. And then as you go further away, you do less. So if you want it to look darker, you just add more lines. If you want it to be lighter, add fewer lines. Um, you can go in the same direction. You can do crosshatch where you go one direction and then you go in another direction. It doesn't matter to me. But what matters is that it goes from dark to light and you're really making sure that positive space stands out. And as you're doing this, notice the difference in these shapes that you're creating in between like this background area. Looking at those shapes and noticing those edges is a big part of developing your artistic skills. Um, I'll go ahead and do a time lapse showing the rest of this.